Hey, we're going to talk about some comics today. Sorry. This is your chance to leave the video by it right away. If you don't want to, well, you're stuck with me, so come on, let's, uh, let's sing it. Hey, it's your boy Soul. Happy Post Star Sketch. How you doing? Today, I'm going to be going doing a comic book review, so let's just go into it. Well, it's not really a comic book review, it's more like a comic strip review, I guess you would call it that, but it's technically the same thing anyway. Uh, this is based off, all right, his name is Windsor McKay, uh, he was born sometime in the 1800s, like mid-1800s, and his comic might possibly be one of the top first, uh, comic strips out there. I know it's not the first one, I know it's not, it's, I'm just saying it's one like the very inklings, the, you know, the, the beginnings, you know what I'm saying? And he is, he is a classic, classic, uh, writer and illustrator as well he illustrated the entire comic strip as well he made it sometime around 1904 and in 1913 i believe and little nemo in slumberland where it has been adapted quite a few times by the way it just took almost 100 years for people to finally get to it like the one i remember the most was from as a child uh when they had the vhs version of it that's what i saw on vhs little nemo and uh slumberland and then there was also like a video game around the same time that came out for like Nintendo or something. After that, it's been a whole lot. But the reason is it's like kind of important, especially for American history and comic strip history, is because of the time frame it came out. Remember, this is like around like basically right around about World War One, to be honest. When the, well, when he made the comic strip, remember he based this off a lot of like his you no know, childhood fantasies, wants his dreams, all that stuff. Now here we are, basically a hundred years later, whole hundred years. Oh my God, can you imagine that? Hundred. God dang. But the character has like shown up in certain media every so often. Not a whole lot. I will say at this moment, the character is probably a little obscure to some folks. That's okay. Lil Nemo's not a superhero. He's not a big guy. He's not any of that stuff. He's just a little, just a little elementary school kid. He just wants uh, attention from his parents sometimes. He always, doesn't always get it. So when he goes to Slumberland or, you know, go to sleep, you know, sleep, you know, <sighs> sleep. Well, what happens is his dreams take him to another world entirely. Like it's literally a sub world of the consciousness and it creates like these crazy crazy fantastical stuff always happen creatures don't even exist anymore just show up or you know it's like a dream it basically is a dream it's a dream realm it's what it is and it's always like a question of is this actually really happening or is this just simply all in his head the answer is yes yes the answer is yes to all of that it's yes now this particular book which is nemo slunderland i mean you know that's character little nemo and i'm just going to show you here how it's done all right so that's the guy who made it windsor mckay and here's the main character coming up right now all right this is the original one of the first comic strips in fact for little nemo and slumberland i'm not kidding this is what it looked like back in the day you know what i'm saying this is actually accurate to the movie version i saw too like you know the people dressing all kinds of weird fancy wear and just like weird americana stuff it's so bizarre it really look just look at this i find it's really creative just look, look at the colors the way it's designed yeah it's a little washed out but this came out almost 100 years ago what'd you expect almost 100 i mean look, look how grand this looks and then the very last panel he just wake this little boy waking up his room but here he's like a prince he's seen as like the highest authority ever but basically what this book does this book came out this year that's the thing about this book uh written in illustrated i believe also by frank p a pa so french author and just everything in this book is amazing i can't show you the whole thing because i'll probably get a copyright claim so can't show you everything i can show you a few pages though so here we go just look this is one of the first page this is implied that this takes place right after the last or so uh comic strips of little nemo summerland okay this is like a continued adventure you almost would say there's uh one of the main characters from the series uh flip the clown he's a clown that's it he's a, he's a freaking clown kids like clowns back then all right they really did things are different now looking for nemo and if you know this is like a storybook type world so what it is is like hundreds of stories that nemo has probably seen or heard about all like dumped into this gigantic pile <laughs> of picture books like just giant books small books and it seems that from a reference book each book seems to represent a new world all together so i guess like a kingdom hearts reference in a way so there you go kingdom hearts reference i guess when you walk away you won't hear me say i won't i won't do that i'm sorry i'll stop i won't do that today right so moving on you know flipping uh we don't know each other so you know basically it takes place like literally moments or days who knows at the, the final comic strip they release and you know things are kind of okay i guess but in the way this book is structured right here it's structured the same exact style that uh the limo uh comic strips were styled so you'll see something just look at that look, look how creative that is like it's like a moose but it's also like a deer and then <laughs> and they just 
combine these animals all together and they're just gigantic versions of them like the giant penguin and all it just makes no sense and then at the very end you see the actual nemo near, near the bottom you know being covered up by his mom and that's how most of these are it, it's a very simple book uh, you, can, you can buy this for your kid basically if you got kids buy it for your kid this is perfect for them they don't have to fully understand what's going on all you need to know is it's a dream world it's always going to end something similar to that where you know, nemo's waking up or reveal that this is a dream in fact or the dream just keeps going that's same that's the theme of a uh, slumberland it's like uh i was called I almost want to call it like an astro plane world that just keeps going. That only Nemo can activate when he goes to sleep. There you go. But see, I, I love this kind of stuff though. It's just cre it's just creative. Look at this. That's so creative. Like the man in the moon on the far on that far uh, left panel right there. And then this gigantic <laughs> elephant is crashing for no reason. It makes no sense. I guess we're like on an ice rink or something, but <laughs> just <laughs> It makes no sense. I love that kind of stuff. I just love the random. It's just, it's super random. This entire book is random. That, look at that, look at that. It's a city made of plants and, and elephant feet and, and weird looking water. It's like, it's part elephant, part city. I don't know what the hell I'm looking at, but I love this. It's beautiful. Look, look at this map painting. That is beautiful. That is, be I am jealous. That's beautiful as hell. And it's such a simple idea too. And it's always like a clue to Nemo that he's in dreamland. But oh, look at this right here. The land of words. It, it doesn't make any sense at all. It's gigantic type fonts <laughs> as a world. That is so, oh my God. I don't get that at all, but it is kind of cool. You can paint over the word and oh my God, it makes no sense. And of course, you know, very end, like most of them, you know, they reveal that yes, he's in slumberland. He's he's just sleeping. It's just this kid who keeps having this this continuous weird dream. It just takes from one world to the next. It's it's just gorgeous. Yo, check this out. Then he goes to a world full of like avians, and for some reason at all, like they just make him like out of nowhere because he's sad or looks sad. You'll be hype. You'll be the prime minister. You little boy. That little boy who has done absolutely nothing. Let's strip him butt naked and make him the prime minister with our greatest jobs. They just throw this all on him. Make him this weird, look at this weird ass outfit. I don't know what this is. Look at a character I found fancy, man. <laughs> I don't know what that is. It's so, oh my God. I wish more comic books were like this. This is a comic that's not afraid to experiment, to do something different. Comics. Take note, it doesn't all have to be superheroes. Things like this can work. I'm like a 30 something year old man. I'm enjoying the hell out of this. It makes absolutely no sense from one page to the next, but that is the point of it. It's all a dream, every single one. Basically every single page or a little short story, it's just another dream world that Nemo keeps creating in his brain for no reason. There is no rhyme or reason in this, but that's, that's the point. Comics, take note. Things like this, I would love to see. Also, the art is gorgeous. Look at that artwork, man. Look at the palette. Look at the colors. Look, look at that detail with, with the coats. Like, what? Oh my god. I, I, I am jealous as hell. This is beautiful. Like, look at this. Look at that. What? Oh, by the way, in case any of you are wondering about spoiling anything, no, I'm really not. Just look at this pan, look at this entire page, and tell me you can make any sense out of it. I bet you you can. The only thing I can tell you is the clouds come to life for no reason, and then a storm happens, and then Nemo wakes up again. <laughs> So if anybody gets so frustrated with this book, I understand. Like, where's the story? Where's the plot? That's just it. This is the entire story. That is the entire plot. He just goes to Dreamland or, or Summerland, whatever, wakes up, and they just go on to the next adventure. This kind of this kind of premise, though, I see. I can still see it working for today. I really could. It just throws you into another universe entirely, and it's a universe that's born from your own brain. Like just things you you like either seen before basically Nemo's just repeating what you see in books or heard about in stories and then he just creates it in his just look at that look, look at this I wish I had dreams like this that is awesome like look at this look at all these like these uh animals just marching it's his bed turning into some kind of humanoid crawling thing I don't know what this is like some creatures like almost combine like is that like what is that over there on the far left is that a tortoise or is that a mole or is it both? I think it's both. And it's like flying walruses all shouting hungry, food, food, food. And then at the end, it's like hungry, hungry hippo. <laughs> <laughs> hungry hungry hippos what it doesn't make any sense i do i love it it's oh my god the random factor in this i keep saying that word but i can't help it it's so random the whole thing i love this guy dude i wish more comics would do this experiment man get creative don't be afraid to just 
do it. Just do it, man. I love this kind of stuff. This is this is artwork. The artwork again, gorgeous as hell. Gorgeous. Mwah, gorgeous. I probably be studying some designs on this because I want to draw a little closer to this. I really do. Like, I'm a pretty good designer and all that, but I, I want to draw closer to this. If they ever ask me, got if they ever ask me to draw some of the stuff in here, oh my god, I will so do it. This is fantastic. Just draw like just outlandish stuff. Yes, I love that kind of stuff. I mean, yo, this most crazy one I've seen. This this is the most metal one yet. This is based off of Windsor McKay himself, as he's like, you know, one night of just drawing just all these, you know, really cool designs and. He's having a great fun. Oh, by the way, this little reference right here at the bottom, right here in the middle, that's a reference, by the way, of one of the most realistic uh, cartoons ever done. Where, oh my God, this dude, this dude, not only was he a great illustrator, he's a great animator too, by the way. Like, when he drew, when he made, like, animations, it was like, not just frame by frame, it's like per second, you know what I'm saying? Like, he, he, he made sure he made thousands, thousands of drawings, intricate little drawings, step by step to create this walking, dancing, dinosaur creature it, it makes no sense but man and yeah in case you wonder he really did this he, he drew so much that he just passed out on the table straight up passed out numerous times he's known to do that so it's showing like you know I, I feel this right here i feel this the most when you're drawing so much to the point where you feel like you're being pulled into the drawing just just it's beautiful and then you know here's the meta joke he goes into slumberland to meet little nemo <laughs> i love that i just i love that kind of stuff i really do you know what i'm gonna end it right here because it's like the best segment it's called windsor mckay in slumberland so it's the create it's the character little nemo being handed over a sketch pad that transforms into the bed of windsor mckay as he wakes up from a dream about little nemo <laughs> That's cute. I like that. Yeah, I give this a nine out of ten. This is this is a great book. It really is. By the way, I'm I, I just edited skipping over a whole lot of stuff, a whole lot of stuff because again, I don't want to get a copyright claim. I will say if you can find this book, go get it. This is beautiful. I just skipped over a lot of beautiful work that I had to skip. I sat the what I think is the best ones, but there's a whole lot more in there. I think you, you sh I think you might like it. If you want to give like a, a cute book a shot, especially for kids. Oh, this is. For little kids, this is perfect. Are you kidding me? This is a book perfect for kids. And it's good for adults too. It's just, it's just, dude. Have you guys seen the artwork? Look at the artwork. Look at that. That's, that is creative as hell. But you know what? I'm gonna stop right here in my review. So this is Little Nemo and Summerland by Frank, Frank Pei. He is a great, great illustrator and Arthur, and he did a fantastic tribute to the entire series. So great work, man. Great work. Anyway, I'm gonna get out of here. So if you want work from me or want to see some of my stuff, you can go to soulstar.weebly.com. You want to get an art commission from me uh, separately, like a different one just to donate to the show as well, go to patreon.com slash soulstarsborn. All right, I'm going to leave you be. This was fun. I can't wait to see how I edit the crap out of this later. But I had to edit. I'm going to edit so much. Oh, my God. Yeah, anyway, I'm going to leave you alone. Take care. Have a beautiful day, people. And please, please, please click the next video. Soulstar out.